All right, this uh, update is mainly to uh, test the the lighting in the in the sound, but uh, I'm sitting here thinking about the channel. I just went through all my videos and fixed the uh, the ads so that there's no ads in the middle of my videos and there's no uh, non-skippable ads. Okay, so I, I usually take a break in the mornings. And I took up some cigar smoking, uh, coincidentally, right around the time that I started to sell my, my stuff in my auctions. Uh, I don't recommend it, okay? Now, if you see me in napkins, I'll light up a cigar and stuff. Um, just, uh, just FYI, right? I don't recommend it. But one of the reasons why I took up flint napping was to relieve some anxiety, to get into the frame of mind that I can be productive at something and enjoy the results of what I'm doing. When I was at work, it was just problem after problem after problem. So that's why I started, one of the reasons why I started the channel. Another reason why was because I, I wanted to see exactly what was going on with my flint napping. I could watch myself. And then I could teach people how to flit nap without actually being there in person. If you see me in person, I'm not that impressive. And if you see my tools, they're pretty low tech. So uh, the video format for me was the best that I, that I could come up with to teach people that were asking me all these questions. Um, so I was thinking about the direction of the channel. I've already said that I'm going to begin posting on my other channels, which I will. But I'm also going to switch over to mainly art pieces here on this channel and also uh, working with materials that I can find at the hardware store or department stores or online. Uh, I'm getting away from the archaeology mainly because that field has been usurped, in my opinion, by people who are authoritarian and uh, not very open to explore the testing side of archaeology. They're more into uh, establishing certain narratives and supporting those narratives and going in directions that are attractive to the public and not necessarily focusing on the data. Uh, so I'm getting away from the archaeology because I cannot with good conscience follow uh, that line of thinking, that authoritarian line of thinking. Okay, I'll be doing mainly and I do mainly experimental archaeology stuff and I experiment with different tools and different materials, uh, different methods. I try to come up with original stuff when I can. I copy a lot of other guys too. My original format in the beginning uh, had a, uh, a very similar style to Jim Wynn. I don't know if you remember him. I, I, he doesn't post anymore, but my original style was modeled after his style. He hardly ever showed himself, uh, and, but he was very, good at showing you exactly what he was doing when he was flint napping. Anyway, I'm going to go into the artistic and experimental side on this channel. I'm going to post on the other channels. Uh, I've got um, two other channels. It's, it's in the description usually in my videos where you can see those other two. Uh, I'm the Patrick Blank channel. That's my name, Patrick Blank is going to be changed to Patrick Blank philosophy. It's going to concentrate mainly on philosophy and that sort of thing and not on archaeology or my hobbies related to bushcraft and woodworking and handicraft type of things. All my hobbies are, ha are handicraft type of things related to survival, bushcraft, archery, a little bit of hunting and fishing although I don't do much of that anymore. Uh, it's mainly just sitting around making stuff, offering some of it for sale, and learning how the human mind works by way of studying how the, 
how we have adapted to making things and developing skills. I've been doing a lot of reading also on philosophy. I've read over a hundred books on philosophy, which is not very much. It's just the beginning. Um, I can re I can listen to or read about a hundred books a year, but it gets expensive. So um, I haven't done that uh, this year very much, but I'm going to get back into it so that I can have content for my Patrick Blank channel. My Allergic Hobbit channel is uh, at, uh, Natural Tool Techniques. Uh, I don't focus on natural tools because the number one thing is, uh, if you ask yourself this question, if you, take, if you take someone out of the past, out of the ancient past, and gave him, let's say, an aluminum tool like I use, and a piece of antler, same shape, same size, and asked him to use those two tools to create his stone items, is he going to use a different technique to make the stone item if he uses the antler or the aluminum or the hammer stone or the aluminum or uh, antler tine or a piece of uh, copper or a piece of aluminum. Is he going to change his technique and change the look of his points if you give him those two options? And which option is he going to take? Is he going to go for the new tool, so-called new, the steel or aluminum or copper, or is he going to stick with his antler stone and maybe horn and wood and that kind of thing what is he going to do he's going in my opinion and i offer my opinion that way as a uh, in as a uh, act of humility not because i think my opinion is very uh, impressive or anything okay i say it's my opinion because that's what it is and i'm a nobody so you can uh, not take my word for it. I'm not an authority on this subject, but I would think that the man from the past or whoever is going to use this, the different materials to create the same looking point using the same techniques, maybe a slight variation in the amount of maintenance required because natural tools require a lot more maintenance than the modern metal tools. He's going to change that, but is he going to change the look of his points, the look of the flakes, or the look of his general uh, activity while making one of those stone tools? My opinion is no. He's not going to change much, if any. And if he does, it's very subtle. When I use natural tools compared to metal, my techniques are the same. I use a supported horizontal punch. Uh, the behind the knee technique is my refinement of that technique. I put the horizontal punch behind my knee and use it that way. Uh, but I use techniques from other nappers as well. Other people are starting to get the hang of the behind the knee technique. If I was given uh, a piece of metal or a piece of antler, I would use the same technique and my flakes would be generally the same. There may be slight differences in the length of the flakes, maybe slight differences in the platforms, in the striking areas, and the amount of abrading involved on the preforms and the bifaces. But the finished points, if I'm used to it, making the finished point, it's going to look the same regardless of the tools I use. So that's why I don't differentiate or I don't try to take a moral high ground for either side, either the natural or the artificial tools. Okay, I try to use everything. Uh, and that helps to develop an understanding of how the human mind works when making anything. But in particular, flint napping, since it is a skill of risk or involves risk, there's the added aspect of risk management the added aspect of strategy to mitigate bad luck or mitigate the, the the bad outcomes of risk that's not the same as other crafts. So that's what interested me a lot in the beginning as well. It gives you insight into the human mind, into philosophical questions like determinism and um, subconscious and conscious mind 
the difference between thoughts and how they're affected by natural laws and actual natural laws. I think there's they're two separate entities. Thoughts are different from natural occurrences because in, in your thought process, it's not subject to natural laws. You can dream up all sorts of things that are not physically possible. It's a separate realm. Okay, but when you integrate the two, that's very interesting. And when you do a skill like flint napping or anything that involves risk, that integration between what you think is going to happen and what actually happens, and learning from that is very, very interesting. I find it very interesting. And I find it uh, relaxing in some ways and very frustrating in other ways. It's, it's very... Uh, it's, it's got, it's a very uh, interesting, the, the huge difference between, sometimes it can be very, very frustrating and then other times are very, very rewarding. Okay, so, um, yeah, this is just a short update or a short explanation. Uh, a lot of people still haven't seen what I look like. <laughs> they don't recognize me at, at Napkins, so I wear a little tag. Uh, I'll be going to more nappings. That's why I mentioned that. I'm going to try to go to nappings in various parts of the country now that I'm able to travel and that sort of thing. So that's it. Um, trying to think. I don't include Kevin in a lot of my videos because uh, I don't want that to be the focus of my channel, you know. He, can, he steals the show every time that I bring him up. Um, and I don't want to use him as, a, as an advertisement for my channel. You know what I mean? Uh, he's just the sneakiest one. He's the one that usually sits around when I'm flint napping. He doesn't get, none of the dogs get near me when I'm flint napping. They know better than to uh, get too close because the flakes will fly and stuff. And I don't pay attention to them when I'm napping, so they don't, they don't come around very much. But they, you can hear them in the background constantly when I'm out here. Uh, oh yeah, another thing about my shop is it's fully ventilated. I get that question a lot. How do I deal with the dust? There's shutters here all around the shop so the wind can come in. The, shut the, uh, the shutter here is broken, so that's just open to the air right there. It's constantly open. Uh, my kids and stuff have done a number on these shutters over the years. They've thrown rocks and branches and stuff uh, just playing around. And I had to replace some of them. But anyway, uh, that hopefully that answers that question. The ventilation here is pretty good. It's very important to not expose yourself to the hazards of flint napping like the dust and the possibilities of infection due to cuts and all that. Uh, okay, I think that's it. I am purchasing a lot of stone now. In fact, 90% of what I'm napping now is stone that I'm purchasing. So I'll, I'll let you know if I find someone that's reliable uh, and that sort of thing. And I'll, I'll work, I'm going to be working on the, 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 the napping updates, where they're located, what states, uh, where the, what the contact numbers are. The best place to get rock, the best place to learn flint napping, the best place to make connections is at nap-ins. Uh, YouTube YouTube has a very good format for teaching, but uh, the added benefit of doing it in person or seeing it in person or getting the uh, tutorials in person makes a big difference. So I want to promote nap-ins. And in the process of promoting the nap-ins, I'll be giving updates and I'll be trying to go to as many nap-ins as possible now and that sort of thing and trying to develop skills in different areas so I can show different types of flit napping. But one thing that I won't do is I won't take a moral stance on which is better, the old way, so-called, or the new way, so-called. All right? Um, I think that's it. Yeah. This seems to be a good good area for me to film. I have a microphone that I can use but it has it needs a battery in it. Uh, sometimes it doesn't broadcast. I gotta redo the video. 
So I'm, I'm testing this format inside the door of my shop to see if this works. All right, so that's about it. There you go.